This is one of the greatest ETF showdowns of all time, and it is one of the biggest questions that we get. Which one do you like better, VOO versus VTI? Now, before we dive into this video, I just wanna explain what an ETF is before we go any further. So ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund, and all it is is a basket of stocks that trades and mirrors like an index. And ETFs are a little bit different than index funds in that they trade like a stock instead of trading like a mutual fund. So say, for example, you wanna invest in something like the NASDAQ 100. Well, if you wanna invest in the NASDAQ 100, you would buy an ETF that mirrors the NASDAQ 100, and what that ETF would do would do exactly what the NASDAQ 100 does. So ETFs are a fantastic way to have passive management. They're amazing for low fees and they have a bunch of other benefits as well. And today the showdown we are talking about is two of the most popular ETFs in the investing world. The first one is VOO and VOO is an ETF that tracks the S&P 500. If you don't know what the S&P 500 is, it's the 500 largest stocks in the US stock market. And these 500 stocks, it's actually a little more than 500, but these 500 stocks are the largest company in the US stock market market. And then we have VTI. And VTI mirrors the total stock market, meaning that you are owning every single stock inside of the US stock market. And VTI has thousands and thousands of different companies inside of this one ETF that you can buy. And when you own these ETFs, you own a small piece of each and every one of the stocks within that fund. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through the similarities and differences between VOO and VTI. Then we're going to get into some of the financial metrics. And then we're going to see, well, how much of these funds actually overlap as well. So the first thing we're going to do is go through the similarities. So the first similarity is both of these are obviously Vanguard funds. So Vanguard is the OG company when it comes to index funds. They have some of the best ETFs and my favorite ETFs, which these are two of my favorite ETFs out there. And Vanguard is a company designed to really help out the average investor. So if you're an investor out there, Vanguard is a great place to look at if you're looking for a brokerage account. Number two is they both have very low expense ratios. So the second similarity is they both have extremely low expense ratios that are going to allow you to have low cost investments over time. Lowering the amount of fees that you have in your investments is incredibly powerful for your long-term wealth building ability. And you definitely want to make sure that you are lowering your fees. Number three is they are both highly liquid, meaning that you can buy and sell these just like a stock. So you can get in and out of VOO and VTI if you want to very quickly. Now, I highly recommend investing for the long-term because long-term investors typically always win. You don't want to be buying and selling in and out of VOO and VTI. And then the fourth similarity is they are passively managed, meaning that these are two passive investments. They are passively managed. So you don't have active managers in there. So the fees are lower because they are passively managed. They mirror the S&P 500 and they mirror the total stock market index. So they mirror these two index. They don't need a whole team of managers in place. So they are passively managed, meaning that they aren't buying and selling a bunch of different securities. Now, there are two key differences that I want you to understand. The first key difference is the number of holdings. So VOO has 508 holdings, which is how many holdings are in the S&P 500, whereas VTI has over 3,500 different holdings. This is a massive difference between the two, meaning that VTI gives you exposure to a bunch of different sectors, meaning large cap, mid cap, and small cap stocks, whereas VOO is only large cap stocks because it's only the stocks inside of the S&P 500. The second difference is somewhat minor, but it's the expense ratio. So the expense ratio of VOO is 0.03%, and the expense ratio of VTI is 0.04%. And likely the difference between those two expense ratios is because with VTI, there are more stocks in that fund, so a little more management that has to be involved. Whereas VOO, there's 508 holdings. So it's not as much management for those 508 holdings. And while this difference may seem small, it can add up over time if you have a very, very large portfolio. So large portfolio holders, make sure you take into account on what this is. Hey, if you're getting value out of this episode, make sure you give it a like. Now I want to dive into some of the key stats when it comes to these investments. So the first one we're going to dive into is VOO. And we're going to look at the key stats of VOO. So if you look at VOO here, we have a 0.03% expense ratio, very low cost, incredibly powerful for your long-term wealth building ability. In addition, we have the dividend yield. So the dividend yield of VOO is 1.28% at the time recording this. And the turnover ratio is 2%. Now this turnover ratio is incredibly important to understand because the lower your turnover ratio, the less you will pay in taxes when it comes to a funds and ETFs are amazingly tax efficient when it comes to your investments. Whereas you can hold an ETF in something like a taxable brokerage and not have to worry about that being inside of your taxable brokerage because they have so much tax efficiency. So these are the two metrics that we really want to look at when we look at this. Now let's look at the top 10 holdings inside of VOO. Now these are all companies you have likely probably heard of. The first one is Apple. The second one's Microsoft. The third one is Amazon. We have Alphabet or Google. We have Berkshire Hathaway, which is Warren 
Warren Buffett's company, Nvidia, Exxon Mobil, United Healthcare Group, and Tesla at the time recording this. Now, this top 10 holdings changes all the time, and it's very important to understand that we do not know what the top 10 holdings will be maybe 10 years from now, which is why it is amazing to invest in this ETF because you get the benefits of all the top companies in the US stock market inside of one ETF. Now, let's look at the, look at the returns because these top 10 holdings are going to hold a very large weight. In fact, inside of that large weight, they hold almost 25% of VOO just inside of those top 10 holdings. So if we look at the total returns over time, you can look at the one-year returns. I'm recording this when we had a bear market is negative 6.78%. The three-year returns are 14.31%. So you can see the difference just by looking between two years. The five-year returns are 8.73%. The 10-year returns are 11.59%. And this fund is a little over 10 years old. So we don't have 15 year returns yet at the time I'm recording this. Now, VTI is an older fund. We'll talk about that in a second. So it has a longer track record than does VOO. So let's dive into VTI's key stats now. So if we look at the key stats of VTI, we have an expense ratio of 0.03%. We have a turnover ratio of 3.0%, which is also a very low turnover ratio, very low expense ratio. In addition, the dividend yield of VTI is 1.28%. So we have a very similar dividend yield to VOO. Actually, it's exactly the same at the time of recording this. So they are very, very close in terms of how they operate there. The top 10 holdings are almost exactly the same. In fact, they are mostly the same companies. They are just in a different order. So it's Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, Berkshire Hathaway, Alphabet Class C, Exxon Mobil, United Healthcare Group, Tesla, and Nvidia. So these are very closely related outside the top 10 holdings of BTI as well. So this is an incredibly important one to understand. Now, now let's look at the total returns. Now this is going to have a long longer time horizon of these total returns because this fund is over 15 years old. So we will have more time horizon here. So after one year, negative 7.72%. After three years, 14.05%. After five years, 8.04%. After 10 years, 11.10%. And over 15 years, 9.54%. So over 15 years, you get 9.5% rate of return. Incredible returns over that time frame. If you invest five, six, $700 per month, you will be a millionaire over the course of 30 years by investing in something like that historically. So that's an amazing, amazing return that you can have over that time frame. Now, here is a chart where you're going to be looking at both these two ETFs, because as we compare these, we want to look at a long term chart to see how these compare. And I use Y charts when we look at this, as you can see down below. So we power this by Y charts. If you want to check out Y charts, we have a link down below so you can check them out. But this is the difference between VOO and VTI over the course of the last 10 years. And as you look at this, it's very important to understand they have very closely related returns. We'll see why here in a second we get in the fund overlap section. But these returns are very closely related. In fact, my suggestion is if you're looking through this and you're trying to figure out which one of these two should I invest in, just pick one and go with it. And we'll talk about my favorite one at the end here. But picking one and going with it is going to be a best option. Don't have analysis paralysis and spend two years trying to figure out which one's better and trying to analyze all this stuff. Pick one and go with it because you can see these have a very similar return because they have a similar weight in the top 10 holdings. And so when you have these available, you can see how these work. Now, outperformed over the long term is VTI, where VTI had three. 329.7% over the last decade, whereas Vanguard, the S&P 500 ETF had 344% over the last decade. So it's a, it, there is a difference in the rate of return in the percentage points as well, whereas the S&P 500 has one, but we don't know what's going to happen in the future. And so making sure that you just make the best investment decision based on your risk tolerance. If you have a lower risk tolerance, then maybe the more diversified VTI may be an option for you. If you have a higher risk tolerance, then maybe the less diversified BOO would be for you as well. Now, one thing we need to note here is what is the fund overlap? If you want to invest in both, for example, should you invest in both? Or does it even make sense to do something like that if you want to diversify out into two different ETFs? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at what is called the fund overlap. And the fund overlap is going to show you exactly how much of the same assets are in these two funds. And we use a tool that I will link up down below called the fund overlap tool. And when you use this tool, you can see, hey, how much overlap is between these two funds? So I'm going to show you on the first screen here, the number of overlapping holdings. So if you look at the fund overlap, there is 501 overlapping holdings. So really VTI has 501 of the same exact holdings as VOO and VOO only has 508 holdings. So they almost have the exact same major core holdings that hold the major weight of these funds. And the top 10 holdings overlap is 99.4% over that time frame, And 14.1% of VTI's holdings are also in VOO. That's only because VTI has way more funds. That's why that is there. Now, if you look at the overlap by weight, the weight of the actual stocks that are held in here, it's 84% is what the overlap is. So that's the number you really want to know is what is the overlap?
overlap. If it's anything above 50%, it's probably a redundant fund to own. You can own both. There's nothing wrong with owning both, but if you don't want fund overlap and you want to make sure that you have massive diversification, then owning both is just probably a redundant thing. Now, let's look at the top holdings in the overlap as well, because this is a cool chart that's going to show you what the top holdings are. So you can see Apple Inc. right here. The weight in VOO is 6.9% and the weight in VTI is 5.9%. You can see Microsoft is 5.7 and 4.9% in VTI. You can see that Amazon is 2.5% and 2.1% in VTI. Alphabet in VOO is 1.7% and it's 1.4% in VTI. So you can go down this list. You can see how much weight differential is here and you can see how closely these are related in the top 10 holdings. Obviously the top 10 holdings are close to 25% of these portfolios. So you definitely want to make sure that you are looking at this overlap to ensure, hey, do I really need to invest in both these or can I just choose one that fits my risk tolerance more so than the other one? So this is a great one to be looking at as you're evaluating performance. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is position highlights of non-overlapping exposure. So these are how much they are underweight or non-overlapping as well. So you can see Apple 0.9%. And then you can also look at the underweight of VOO relative to VTI. So VOO has less Uber shares. It has less Blackstone Group, Palo Alto Networks, Airbnb, all the way across the board there. So using this tool is a really cool way to get some really high level analysis that's going to allow you to really evaluate, hey, does this fit my risk tolerance? Now, which one is my personal favorite? Which one do I like more out of these two funds? Listen, these are two of my top five favorite ETFs in the world. Why? One, they have a low expense ratio. Two, they are historically proven. Three, I know I'm going to get a great rate of return historically that you have gotten over that long term. Four, they invest in the U.S. stock market, meaning that over the long term, historically, the U.S. stock market has gotten a very high rate of return, somewhere between seven to 10 percent, depending on how you adjust for inflation. So making sure that you have that aligned with your investment goals is going to be very, very powerful. But which one do I like more if I had to choose one and I could not choose the other, I would choose the more diversified one, which is VTI for me personally. The reason why it's more diversified, it holds stocks in every single different sector, but still has a really high weight of what's in VOO. For, so for me, the Vanguard Total Index is one of the best ways to invest. And in fact, the book, The Simple Path to Wealth talks about this. All you really need is a Vanguard Total Index is what the Simple Path to Wealth portfolio argues. So that is another option that you can think through as you do this. Now, what about international exposure? We have a video talking about the one fund portfolio and how you can do this. You can check that video out as well. But this is one where if you're going to choose between the two, they're almost exactly the same for me. But if I had to choose one personally and I could not invest in anything else, I would just want the more diversified portfolio in VTI. Listen, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions, make sure you leave them down in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell as well, and share some love down in the comments below. Make some friends, high five your neighbor. And thank you guys again for watching this video. And we will see you on the next video.